electric current and circuits. Introduction The word electricity comes from a Greek word, electron, which means amber, a kind of resine. When amber was rubbed with wool, it acquired the property of attracting small bits of paper or cork. Besides amber, there were many other substances such as glass, sealing wax, plastic, nylon, etc., which also acquire the attractive property when they are rubbed with suitable substances. These substances were called the electrics. Like and unlike charges. When glass is rubbed with silk, electrons are knocked out of glass. These electrons attach themselves to silk, leaving it with a net negative charge. The glass has less electrons now and so is positively charged. When ebonite is rubbed with fur, electrons detach themselves from fur and attach themselves on ebonite, leaving the ebonite with a net negative charge. Fur has lost some electrons and so it is positively charged. Charged body in terms of transfer of electrons. The bodies are originally neutral electrically. When two bodies are rubbed together, the free electrons are transferred from one body to the other. On rubbing, the body which gains free electrons becomes negatively charged and the body which loses free electrons becomes positively charged. It must be clearly understood that the electrification due to positive charges is not because of the transfer of protons, but it is due to the deficiency of electrons. Electric current. Electricity plays a very important role in our daily life. It lights, heat and cools our homes and also performs a number of routine jobs for us. Electricity flows through electric wires. Electricity in motion is called current electricity. Take two electroscopes, one charged positively and the other negatively and connect them through a metal wire as shown in figure, what do you observe? You will find both the electroscopes are discharged quickly, that is, the leaves of both the electroscope collapse. Why? The fact can be explained on the basis of flow of electrons. The excess electrons on the negatively charged electroscope flow through the conducting wire to the electroscope charged positively and neutralizes the excess positive charge on it. Conventional current it is a convention to say that electric current flows from the positive end of a wire to its negative end. In fact, in a metallic wire, it is the electrons with drift from the negative end to the positive end of the wire. We call this current as the electronic current. The electronic current is equivalent to conventional current flowing from the positive to the negative end of wire. The cell is a source of electric current. The direction of flow of electrons is from the negative to the positive terminal of the cell, as shown by the arrow in figure. The direction of conventional current is from the positive to the negative terminal of the cell. This is shown in figure. Current and quantity of electricity. If current I flows through a wire for a time t, the quantity of charge transferred is Q is equal to I into T. Conversely, the current may be defined as the quantity of charge that flows in one second across a charge that flows in one second across a cross-section of the wire. That is, I is equal to Q by T. The fourth basis of SI unit of current is the ampere, symbol A, the unit of current. The SI unit of charge or quantity of electricity is the Coulomb, symbol C. One coulomb is the quantity of electricity that flows per second through a cross section of the wire in which a current of one ampere is maintained. Charged on one electron is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Therefore, one coulomb is equal to 6.25 into 10 to the power of 18 electronic charges. Relation between ampere and coulomb is given below. Since current is I is equal to Q by T, therefore 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb by 1 second or 1A is equal to 1C by S or 
1 coulomb is equal to 1 ampere per second or 1 C is equal to 1 AS. Besides ampere, its submultiples milliampere symbol MA and microampere symbol mu A are also used. Similarly, submultiples of coulomb are millicoulomb symbol MC and microcoulomb symbol mu C. It may be noted that 1 MA is equal to 1 by 1000 A and 1 MC is equal to 1 by 1000 C. 1 mu A is equal to 1 by 100,000 A and 1 mu C is equal to 1 by 100,000 C. Sources of electric current. The cell are of two kinds, the primary cells and the secondary cells or accumulators. The primary cells provide current as a result of chemical reaction. They cannot be recharged. It means the chemical reaction is irreversible. Simple voltaic cell. Leclanche cell. Daniel cell. Dry cell, etc. are examples of primary cells. The secondary cells or accumulators provide current as a result of chemical reaction and they can be recharged as and when required. Here, the chemical reaction is reversible and the electrical energy can be stored in it. Lead accumulator, nickel iron accumulator or alkali accumulator are examples of secondary cells. Differences between primary and secondary cells. Secondary cells differ from the primary cells in the following respects. In a primary cell, the chemical reaction is irreversible, whereas in a secondary cell, the chemical reaction is reversible. In a primary cell, the chemical energy is converted into electrical energy, whereas in a secondary cell, the electrical energy is first stored as chemical energy, which then converts into electrical energy when current is drawn from it during the discharge. Primary cells cannot be recharged, whereas secondary cells can be recharged. The internal resistance of primary cells is much higher than that of the secondary cells. The internal resistance of secondary cells is much lower than that of the primary cells. Bigger sources of electric current. The electrical energy used in factories, electric trains, etc. is also of very large magnitude. Cells cannot provide this energy. For producing a large amount of energy, big powerhouses are constructed in which the energy of flowing water or the energy of steam is converted into electrical energy. An electric generator consists of two parts, namely turbine and dynamo, which are coupled together. The energy of the flowing water or steam rotates the blades of the turbine. The energy of the turbine operates the dynamo which finally converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy. Electrical energy so generated at powerhouses is carried by electric cables to the cities and villages. The electric cables are made of thick copper or aluminium wires. These cables are mounted on very tall steel towers. Chemical energy into electrical energy. A dry cell consists of a zinc casting and a carbon rod with a brass cap at its center. The carbon rod is surrounded with a black powder which is a mixture of manganese dioxide, MnO2, and graphite, C. This black powder is either contained in a thin bag of cloth or is surrounded by a thin layer of sawdust. The space between the zinc casing and the sawdust is filled with a thick paste of ammonium chloride, NH4Cl. The construction of the dry cell is shown in figure. The zinc vessel is surrounded by thick insulating paper. A layer of pitch seals the top of the cell and prevents the leakage of the contents of the cell. In this cell, the carbon rod acts as the positive terminal anode and the zinc casing which reacts with ammonium chloride paste electrolyte acts as the negative terminal cathode. At the anode, Zinc loses electrons and at the cathode, gain of electrons take place. Electrons flow from zinc to the carbon rod, which generates electric current. A dry cell gives a voltage of 1.5 volts.
The other varieties of dry cells are silver cells, lithium cells or button cells, etc. These are much smaller in size and are therefore used in calculators, watches, cameras, etc. Another type of dry cell is known as mercury cell. Cell Advantages and Disadvantages Advantages of dry cell They are compact, light and easy to carry from place to place and convenient to use. Disadvantages of dry cell They produce small currents of a relatively short period of time and cannot be used after they run down. Dry cell connections Connect a torch bulb across a dry cell as shown in figure and observe the brightness of the bulb. Now, take two dry cells and arrange them such that the negative electrode of one touches the positive electrode of the other. Connect the same torch bulb to this arrangement with two dry cells. That now the bulb glows more brightly. If they arrange two cells in such a way that the positive electrode of one touches the positive electrode of the other, as shown in figure, you will find that the bulb does not glow at all. A group of two or more cells, when connected together with correct polarities, is called a battery. Conductors and Insulators Some conductors and insulators of electricity are listed above. Elements of an electric circuit The essential components or elements of an electric circuit are given below. Electric sources, cell, battery, etc. Electric appliances, a device for using the electric current. Conductor, for providing a path for the flow of current. Switch or a key, for opening and closing the circuit. Open and closed circuits. In a circuit, if the switch is opened or the wire is cut, the flow of current is stopped and we say that the circuit is open or incomplete. Thus, in an open circuit, no current is drawn from the cell. If the switch is closed, a current flows. The flow of current is indicated by the glowing of an electric bulb included in the circuit. Thus, if a current is drawn from the cell, the circuit is said to be closed or complete. Symbol of circuit elements The conventional symbols for some common elements of electric circuit are given in the table. Circuit diagram some of the most commonly used circuit diagrams are given in figure. A circuit containing one bulb and one cell. A circuit containing two cells and one bulb. A circuit containing three cells and one bulb. Electric torch. In a pocket torch, usually there are two or more cells connected as shown. The figure shows the arrangement of cells and the bulb in a torch. Two or more cells are arranged end to end in series in an electric torch to increase the brightness of the bulb. Brightness of cells Take a dry cell and a torch bulb. Connect the bulb to the cell as shown in figure A. Notice the brightness of the bulb. Now connect two cells as shown in figure B. Now the bulb glows more brightly. You may try using more cells in a similar manner to further increase the glow.